Well, hey there everyone and happy Tuesday. I'm Fox 10 News meteorologist Jennifer Lambers with a look at your forecast and on this edition of Next Weather. Now, just a reminder of what Next Weather is. This is going to be something that we do Monday through Friday airing at 2.30. Now, we dive deeper into the forecast and explain just what's going on, whether with this forecast or explain some of the topics that you're curious about. Always a reminder that we are live streaming on YouTube and Facebook at this time. And so in case you have any questions, comments, you can always do so on our Facebook page. And in case you want to watch this later, you can do so on your streaming apps and also on YouTube. So that way you always have this to go back to. Again, not really focused on the forecast right now for what we're seeing, but I want to go ahead and talk further about what we're expecting as we make our way later on into the rest of the months ahead of us. And so specifically today, we're going to be talking about the tropics and about this hurricane season. So again, thank you for joining us on today's edition of Next Weather. And so I want to go ahead and get started again, hurricane season, and we have 137 days left. So we're already about halfway through July, but it does go until November 30th. And so with that, it's going to be so important just to stay updated with the forecast with what's going on. And so I want to start off first by focusing on the month of July. Where do we typically see the most development during this month? Well, one main place is going to be the Gulf of Mexico. We're starting to already experience some of those warm waters. A lot of those also just on the Southwest Caribbean is where we'll notice those high development areas. Again, this is all statistics where most of this begins to form. But also this early in the season is typically when we see more of those weaker storms. June and July, we'll have tropical storms. We'll have about those Category 1 hurricanes. And that's why Barrel was such a record-breaking system that we've already seen. Again, that Category 4 hurricane just a few weeks ago. Additional areas that we typically see the highest development for during the month of July will be just off the east side of the Florida Peninsula and the Carolinas. Always a hot spot. Also with some of these, those are going to be more of those short-lived short -lived systems. They quickly spin up. They strengthen just a little bit before pushing further inland. We had one about a week ago that we were monitoring in that area. And the good news is that that never came to fruition. Additional spots too is just going to be on the east side of the Caribbean in the central Atlantic. Those will always push closer towards our Caribbean areas. So it's so important to watch those spots specifically once we get further on into the month of July, but we are quickly approaching closer towards the month of August. And so still going to be watching those areas. Now, if you're familiar with the Gulf Coast hurricane season, if you're new to this area, even if you're somewhere else watching this, then something also to keep in mind is that the peak of hurricane season typically comes around mid-September. It ranges from around September 10th to the 14th. And so that's when we'll notice not only the higher frequency, but also those stronger storms really making an appearance. It's because we get later in the season, we get more of those warm water temperatures, and that's what makes those storms thrive. That's also once something that we're going to talk about in a little bit, the Saharan dust. That's when we start to see less of it. So it's so important to stay updated with what the conditions are out there. And this is all statistical too. This goes back from 1851 to 2018, showing that the highest frequency for these storms takes place once we get closer towards September and October. So a lot of our storms um, here that we've even had in the past few years taking place during that time frame. Hurricane Sally around September 14th, Hurricane Zeta later on in the month of October. Now, where are we so far for this season? It's 2024. We've only seen three name storms. Now, I say only because we're making our way to the middle of July, but this was a above average forecasted season. And so by this point, we're hoping to knock off more of those names, but just get some of those tropical storms, the category ones, especially the ones that just thrive in the Atlantic and are a problem for the fish out of the way. But we really haven't experienced much of those for this year. That was what we saw for the 2023 hurricane season was a lot of those just taking place in the Atlantic, keeping to themselves. Again, a problem for the fish, not really impacting the U.S. mainland. This year, a little bit different. Barrel especially breaking all of those records, a category four hurricane. And so if we do have another system named soon, the next name would be Debbie. 
and after that, Ernesto. So hopefully we don't see any of those making their way closer towards us, but it's important to know what's ahead of us and to talk more about that. So just a reminder, the season forecast. I wanna make my way from the right to the left because I wanna start with average. This was updated a few, uh, about two years back, two or three years back, uh, where they take the statistics for around the every 30 years. And so the numbers went up, but also you have to remember that technology, it's getting so much better. Our satellite systems to where we can track more of these storms. That's why those numbers are also going up. That some of the storms we really wouldn't have named in the past, we name now because we have much better technology to go and investigate them, see them on satellite. And so even if they're not impacting any land, that's when they get named. So typically in a season, we see 14 named storms, seven of those being hurricanes with three of those being major. Now, NOAA and Colorado State both came out ahead of the season and said, hey, things are all coming together. We're expecting an above average season. NOAA called for 17 to 25 named storms. They called for eight to 13 hurricanes, four to seven of those being those major hurricanes, again, category three and above. And then Colorado State, they actually come back every month and update the numbers that they're forecasting. And so they started with lower numbers than this. I believe it was 23 named storms. They upped it to 25. Um, the hurricanes also went up from 11 to 12 and then major hurricanes went up from five to six. So they are almost calling for complete double amounts of the storms there that we typically see in an average season. But so far we've seen three name systems. So that's what's concerning about the forecast versus what we've already seen so far for the season. You root for everything to be a little bit earlier because again, that's when we typically see more of those weaker storms. So later we get in the season and we're expecting all of these storms. That's when it becomes a bit more concerning. The things to keep in mind right now, have a plan, make sure your insurance is up to date, make sure that you're covered, make sure you have that wind damage on it. Just make sure that you give them a call and everything is up to date and that everything is paid in full too with that insurance. Now the tropical outlook, things are quiet out there right now. Something that we really like to see expected to be quiet for the next seven days. No tropical development is expected. And so while that is a nice thing to see, we still have to think about the whole season ahead of us, not just the next week that we're looking at. But I did want to talk about why things are so quiet right now, and that's courtesy of Saharan dust. Now we talk about this every single year. It comes in waves. We just saw it a few days ago. It was leading to some very vibrant sunsets. And so it looked beautiful out there once we saw sunrise and sunset. Things are quiet right now, but looking ahead, once we get further on towards the end of the week, take a look at that. All of that Saharan dust that's just coming off of Africa and really just pushing closer towards the Caribbean, Bermuda, and then heads up to us here on the Gulf Coast, it's only gonna start to get closer towards the Gulf Coast. And so folks that all have sensitive allergies, if you're asthmatic, you're gonna wanna limit your time outside because that's only gonna continue as we get towards the end of the weekend and into early next week. So sunrise, sunset is gonna be beautiful early next week. So photographers, if you're wanting to do anything outdoors to just get some of those bright, vibrant colors out there, that's gonna be the evenings to do it. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, because it's gonna be beautiful out there. But again, in case you suffer from any of those allergies, asthmatic, limit your time outdoors because of that dust that could be impacting us. Now, why does the Saharan dust keep us quiet on the tropic side? Well, it's because hurricanes, they like the moist, humid air. And this is the opposite. This is more of that dry, dusty air. So it helps just stop some of that development. They don't like it. And also it creates haze in the atmosphere. And so the sun can't quite reach the water. And so it helps to cool down the water temperatures just a little bit. So we root for the dust. We want the Saharan dust closer towards us. I'm sorry if you suffer from the allergies once it gets closer, but it really does help our hurricane season. And it typically peaks around July into August. So that's why once it starts to subside and we see less of it towards the end of August and into September, that's when the peak begins to make an appearance for our hurricane season. So really something just to watch out for there. Again, hurricane season, it is here. We still have 137 days of it. So it's gonna be so important just to stay updated with the forecast and watch what we are monitoring here. 
And again, the best advice is just to make sure that everything's caught up with your insurance. If you have your hurricane kit, make sure you have that ready to go as well. And just stay updated with us here at Fox 10 News because we're going to be monitoring all of this and working hard to keep you updated. Again, I'm meteorologist Jennifer Lambers for this edition of Next Weather. I'll continue to monitor the comments on the Facebook Live in case you are joining us live with this. In case you weren't able to make it, you can always watch it again on our YouTube page or also all of our streaming apps. Chief Meteorologist Jason Smith will be back here tomorrow at 2.30 to keep you updated on a new topic. But I will be on Fox 10 Live coming up at 3 o'clock with a look at your forecast and talking more about the rain chances we're experiencing here locally. But wishing everyone a fantastic Tuesday.